What's up guys? Katie Kleber here. I just wanted to do a quick video because I've heard a lot and actually I felt like this a lot too. I'm bad at math. Can I be a good nurse? And I think a lot of people think, well, I'm not good at math, so there's no way I can be a good nurse. Eh, wrong. I hate math. Like, I hate math, guys. I hate it. But you don't have to be a mathematician to be a great nurse. You need to know some basic concepts. And the more you do them, the better you get at them. You don't need to learn and take this, you know, 10 math courses and understand them in and out. There are very few um, really important things to learn that are very easy to learn and very easy to remember which is really important those if you can really just get those under your belt you can do you'll do fine you'll do just fine it's also important too that if you want to get involved in research and get involved in stuff statistics is important um, but if you're worried about being a successful bedside provider right away you know we just got to get through some really important basic concepts dosage calculations are huge the dose ordered over the dose available times the amount do da if you can remember that you're you're golden with almost half of the probably 75 percent of the math you're going to need to do on a real day-to-day -day basis um, the reason being the physician or whomever is going to order a medication but the physician doesn't order this medication knowing what um, amount it comes in if that makes sense so maybe the physician is ordering um let's say four milligrams of zofran but my Zofran comes in a 10 milliliter syringe that has 10 milligrams in it. How, how many milliliters do I get, right? And that one's a little easier, but like, you know, there are somewhere, it's not a one-to-one -one concentration. You know, you have two milligrams in a five milliliter syringe. So you really do have to figure that stuff out. But I t I'm telling you, you get used to it, it's easy. And the wonderful thing too is a lot of electronic m medical records have ca calculators built in or they already have the dosage figured out and you just have to double check it. And if you're ever in doubt, you can always utilize your resources. You're not gonna be like stranded on a desert island with no one to talk to and no calculator and this life-saving med that you have to give. Like I feel like in school they kind of make it seem like that's the scenario you're gonna be in all the time. <laughs> but really you can just ask a, co a co-worker and ask a co-worker to double check your work and you can call the pharmacist. I call my pharmacist all the time. If I'm not sure about something, I double check with the pharmacist. They're not annoyed. They're happy to be able to be um, helpful in providing safe patient care by double checking meds. Um, and the other one, um, other than providing like figuring out dosage calculations, you'll learn about drip rates. Um, that's one of those low frequency, high risk kind of things. So you're really going to make sure you're doing the right thing before you do it. Um, but for the most part, for most people, you're just going to figure out, um, I've pump rates and many times honestly nine times out of ten the rate that the physician wants it to infuse it in is on the order in the on the med so you don't have to figure it out but sometimes they'll say um, give 50 milliliters of um, zosin over two hours so then what would my rate be you know but or they'll say give this liter bolus over or not a bolus let's get, give a liter of saline over two hours and then you figure it out but then again it's still very simple um once you get used to it it gets easier and easier and and i'm terrible at math but i feel very confident in my um math capabilities to provide safe patient care i'm not doing geometry and calculus and all this crazy stuff. I'm doing very basic math calculations, which we outline in a post. Um, and we'll put the link to it below this video. And it's really just dose ordered over dose available times amount, maybe converting some units, maybe the, the medication is ordered in grams, but I'm given milligrams, you know, going or another one that you do see a lot is going from pounds to kilograms. But again, a lot of commute or computer charting things and electronic health records. Well, if you put in pounds, it automatically figures kilograms. But that's a 
real basic one. You know, you get used to it. It's it's not um, it's not terrible. It, you so get used to it, but it seems overwhelming in nursing school because you're learning all of this stuff for the first time. And then when you get out into the real world of nursing, you'll figure out your specific niche and the math and the stuff you need to know for that. Like if you're going to work in pediatrics or neonatal intensive care, you know that the weight um, weight based medications are all you do. You know, the patient weighs this many kilograms. How many how many milligrams will I give? Um, but me working an adult, I don't do that as much. I mean, I have some weight based medications, but most most of them are not, and I don't do that quite as often. Um, but so to answer that question. You absolutely can be a wonderful nurse even if math is not your strong suit. It is a challenge but it is very conquerable and I am not great at math and I feel very confident in my math skills. So um, in my math skills related to giving patient care. Not all math skills. <laughs> Um, so yes, encourage and encourage you guys. You can do it. It's not the worst. I promise. Honestly, the most stress you're going to feel about math is going to be in nursing school when you have to pass those math tests and you have to get certain grades versus when you're actually in front of a patient because you truly have a lot of support. You have a lot of resources available and I know they tell you you're never allowed to use calculators, but who doesn't always have a calculator in their pocket? Their phone! I always have my phone. So even if I can't find a calculator, I can use my phone and calculate whatever it is. So there you go. I hope this helps and good luck to all of you nursing students out there just learning about nursing math for the first time. I promise it gets easier. Thanks guys.